If you would turn to 1 Thessalonians, <clears throat> 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. <clears throat> 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14. <clears throat> there is a little, I don't know, something working through, you know, kind of the kids, the church. There's a little cough here and there. <clears throat> I'm struggling with my voice. I am not sick. I'm not sick. I really am not. <clears throat> I watched a ball game yesterday. I didn't have much to say during the ball game other than just kind of moan and bellyache about most of it. <clears throat> got down to the last play, Jeremy and I were watching it together, and we're both just uh, kind of fit to be tied. Our team's losing, you know, it's 40 seconds left, it's, it's fourth down, 31 yards, you got to gotta score, go home, you know, and uh, we turned to each other, said it's going to take, take a miracle to win this game, and we got one, and uh, we're jumping up and down. If people, if people had looked in, I thought about this, if people had looked in the window, <laughs> they would have thought we were idiots, and we were idiots. <clears throat> and we were jumping up and down, screaming. And I did not do my voice any f favors today, so I apologize. I know it's tough to, to listen to this sometimes. So <clears throat> we're going to begin in verse number 14. There's a little phrase I want you to notice when we get there. They please not God. They please not God. <clears throat> and you may wrestle with it sometimes. What's my life about? What am I doing with myself? <clears throat> what's, what's the goal of this? There must be some purpose in me being here. There is. There is. It is to please the Lord, to honor Him, to glorify Him, to use your life on His behalf. And so... That's a good place to be, to be able to please Him. <clears throat> it says in verse 14, it says, For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men. <clears throat> forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins all way. For the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. <clears throat> Look at verse number 15. This description of them, it says they please not God. And they are contrary, not just to God, but to all men. <clears throat> I don't, want to live, I don't want to live my life like that. Not like that. So we're going to pray. I'm going to ask Brother Dan if you wouldn't mind praying for me and uh, pray for everybody here that they'd have <clears throat> the ability to make it through this thing. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I was trying to think of maybe how to explain this, what this looks like. These people that, that please not God, that word please has the thought of being agreeable. That um, it, it has this thing of, I think, of satisfaction. They <clears throat> we may not always do it, but we're trying to do it, trying to to please the Lord, trying to be agreeable with Him, trying to, trying to fit Him, uh, to, to acknowledge His wishes, <clears throat> His desire for us. I thought about maybe if you and I went to a store, someplace like Ikea, uh, someplace you're looking for a table, and uh, we wander through the whole place, and the displays are beautiful. 
You think, man, I'd, I'd like this table in my home. <clears throat> if you've never been there before, you may not have realized this, but you're not going to get a table like a table that you see in the display. You say, I want this table. You take the order number, they get you the table, and it comes in a box. It comes with, I think, maybe the three most dreaded words known to mankind. Some assembly required. <clears throat> For some of their stuff, you got to buy special tools. Tools unknown to any other toolbox, you know. You get it home, you're up to it, you've, you've kind of steeled yourself to the task. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. You begin to chant, you know. You get out the parts list and you go very carefully through the list. I've, I have all the screws, I have all these things, I have all the fasteners, I have all the parts there. And we'll follow the directions very closely. So you slowly begin to work your way through it. You're putting this table together. <clears throat> Leg number one goes on. Get it tight and fastened. It's on there. Leg number two goes on there fastened. Hey, this is going piece of cake, right? Leg number three goes on fastened. One more leg. I got me a table. I can set it up. I can begin to use it. You get leg number four and it looks like all the other legs. But when you get the leg and try to put it in the opening, the place that would accept that leg, <clears throat> it doesn't go in. You turn the leg, you know, just kind of a quarter turn. No, I didn't go in. Maybe I got it in backwards. Turn around. It doesn't fit. It's, those two parts are not agreeing. <clears throat> They're not fitting. They're not pleasing one another. I don't know if you've ever experienced the frustration of something not fitting in a slot or a tab or an opening or a hole. You think, I've got the wrong part. This isn't fitting. It's frustrating. It's aggravating. You begin to, you begin to talk to the table. You talk to the people that made the instructions. You talk to the people that designed the table. The people that assembled the package, you know, they can't hear you, but you're talking to them anyway. <clears throat> I have to think that in some ways this is the same thing. When we don't please the Lord, we're not fitting into his program. We're not agreeable to him. There is something very precise, exacting that he's looking from, from us and we're unwilling to give it to him. It's not that we can't do it, but we oftentimes we won't do it. <clears throat> and Paul is talking here to this church of believers, maybe <clears throat> in many ways an ideal church, a model church. He said, you become followers, imitators. He's mentioned that before about how they're following him. They, he they followed the, the group that they brought to Thessalonica. <clears throat> They've done well. They've received the Word of God exactly as it is that it is the Word of God. And it has changed them. He said, you followed so much in this, even in this, you followed these churches of Judea into their suffering. <clears throat> Not everybody is excited about your walk with God. Not, not everybody's encouraged that you've turned your life to Christ. Not everybody's happy that you're trying to follow the Word of God all the way through. You're different. You've been changed. The way you think, the way you work, the way you talk, the way you play, all these things are different for a believer. <clears throat> And he says here in verse number 14, he said those churches in Judea, they have suffered. He said you've come to a place that you've suffered also. You know, our walk with God sometimes leads us into some hard places, difficult paths, 
stressful times, pressure, pressure packed, stress filled seasons of our life. <clears throat> and you say, I'm trying to do exactly what I ought to do. What did I do wrong? You may have done everything right. And because you've done it right, it's led you to that place. Is something broken? Is something wrong? No, no, no. It's just the nature of what we've entered into. We've not been called to a path of ease. We've been called to a righteous path. A narrow path. He said, you've been persecuted like these folks back in Judea. They, but by their own home country people, <clears throat> you also. He said, they've persecuted us. And he says, they please not the Lord. I think Paul has some admiration for those churches in, in Judea in the sense that he has some respect for them, that they're walking in the path of the Savior without turning aside. <clears throat> They've stayed at it. They've continued to do it. They've been diligent. We sing a song fairly often, I am resolved. I am resolved. I like that, that we are resolved to follow the Savior. We're resolved to go on no matter what. <clears throat> and because of their response to the Word of God, they become a target. A target. i got to tell you, I don't like being a target. And Paul's saying, hey, you Thessalonians, I want you to know that you've not, you're not alone in this. These other churches are suffering the same persecution. Look, the word of man is not worth suffering for oftentimes, but the word of God is worth suffering for. It is worth it. The voice of God leading us is worth suffering for. And this persecution, it, it's, there's a word implacably. It means that it's been done in a negative way that cannot be changed. It's as if you can't wiggle out of it. And their intent is not to give up, but to press on the pressure. They're not, they're not going to give it up. And so what is confusing to these Thessalonian people is possibly this, is that the persecution, the pressure, the stress, the danger is coming from religious people. Religious people. Now that doesn't sound right, does it? That ought not to be. I'm telling you, oftentimes your greatest persecution is going to come from people that have a religion, right. some form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. <clears throat> they have the trappings of it all, but they've missed the essential element of it, of it all. They don't know God. They have no relationship with Him. And so they have a shell of this religiosity without any, without any true walk with the Lord. And when you get around somebody like that and you have a walk with God and you know the Savior and you are able to communicate with Him and you're sure of it, there is a, there is a confidence that is bred in a believer that is unmistakable. We're not cocky. We're not, we're not sure of ourselves. But we're sure of the Lord. <clears throat> Confident in Him. And so our faith is sometimes mistaken for arrogance. And we're not to be arrogant people. But we're to be faith-filled people. <clears throat> and so these Thessalonians sometimes they are confused by this. Why would these people persecute us? You know, God had something to say about the children of Israel back all those years ago when Moses was leading them. 
He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, it says, But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. They had no faith in God. And they were overthrown. Can I ask you a question? Before we even deal with this thing about pleasing the Lord, do you have faith in God? Do you have faith in Him? I think it's a serious question. You ought to, and some of you nodding, responding, you say, yes, I have faith in God. If you're not sure about that, there's, there's no great, there is no greater thing to settle than that one thing. I mean, we're, we're all over the place. <laughs> Got to know this. Hey, I need an answer. You better answer this. Do I have faith in God? Because we know without faith you cannot please God. These religious people, <clears throat> of all things, in verse number 16, <clears throat> it says, forbidding us to speak. <clears throat> There's some people I'd like to forbid to speak, you know. <laughs> Maybe you have somebody in mind. Please don't blurt it out. <laughs> Especially if it's somebody next to you. He said it. He said they didn't forbid us to speak because we were annoying. <clears throat> because they were stupid. <laughs> because we just drone on and on. He said, we were forbid to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. He said, they didn't want us to give the gospel. So why would people do that? These were Judaizers, and we're not going to spend much time with that, but just they, they said this. They said, for the Gentiles to come, they got to come through, they got to be a Jew. They got to act like a Jew. They got to, they got to, Celebrate what we celebrate. They gotta they gotta have the ceremonies that we have. You know, when it gets to Galatians, it talks about this this legalism. That's what that's about. Adding things to salvation. Salvation is offered free and clear to every soul. It's not something that we do, it's done. Salvation is done. So whenever anybody anybody tries to add something to salvation other than Christ is too much. They said they're trying to do that. <clears throat> and Paul at some points he says, I'm done with you. Acts chapter 18 is one of those places he says, I'm clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. He said, I'm, I'm done dealing with you. I'm done coming to you. I've tried to come, and you, you have withstood me and forbidden me and persecuted me. I'm going to people that will receive it. Paul says this in chapter 2, verse number 4. He said, but as we were allowed of God to, to be put in the trust and trust with the gospel, even so we speak. Not as pleasing men, but God which trieth our souls. Paul's group did not please men. He said, I'm not trying to please men. It is a difficult path to try to please people. You're going to be sorry about that. I think it's one of our big gripes oftentimes is that with politicians is that they, they're testing the wind what do, people, what, do, what do the people want right now? Not about what's right. Not but about what is wrong, but <clears throat> what do my donors want? What, do, what does this super PAC say? Paul says, not as pleasing men. He said, we've, you know, pleasing fickle people is difficult because the expectation is all over the place. The goal line is moved. Pleasing men often em has to employ flattery, lies. Paul said, I've not done that. Pleasing men may be an attempt to get an easier path because we're cowards at heart. I don't want to do this. 
I'll just go with the flow. I'll say what, what they want me to say. Look, I, I don't say this a whole lot, but if there's ever a point in my life where I begin to drift, where I don't preach the Word of God, you say, Pastor's kind of taking an easy path here. He's, he's not saying, he's not teaching, he's not preaching the Word of God. Get rid of me or go find another place. Paul said, I'm not pleasing men. He said, I have one boss. I have, I have one judge of this. It is the Lord. God deliver us from trying to please men. <laughs> so Paul's group said, I, we're not going to please men. This, this group says, we're not going to please God. They've taken a contrary stance. I don't know if you underline things in your Bible. You might underline that phrase in verse number 15. They please not God. Am I someone like that? Do I not please God? Is God not happy with me? We're, we're kind of stepping out of this Thanksgiving season. <clears throat> And I think some of this thing of thanksgiving is this, is that we are able to say to God, I am satisfied with the way you've led me. I'm satisfied with what you've done in my life. I'm satisfied with what you've given me because I am pleased with you, who you are, what you are, what you've done, what you've said, I want to please you. Are you not satisfied with what God's done in your life? Man, that is convicting to me. There are times where I wanted something different. I thought something more. There's nothing more than what God has for you. And so I've crafted my own agenda, you know, written my own little schedule for my life. I kind of went off script had lived it. I'll tell you, it messed things up. It's kind of like, Lord, I don't want your path. I'm going to try to create my own path. Wasn't pleased with him, and I didn't please him. Now, these are some pretty extreme things here. These people, it says in verse 15, who both killed the Lord Jesus. They connive, these religious Jewish leaders. The people stood there that day said, crucify him. Paul goes to great lengths, though, in Romans chapter 1 and chapter 2 and chapter 3. The guilt is not just the Jews, folks. Right. Romans, Roman soldiers, Roman government nailed him to that tree. Paul declares this, that the Jews, the Roman world... All of mankind is guilty before God. I hope you understand this in the heart I say it in. You nailed Christ to the cross with your sin. You did that. And I did that. You say, well, at least I never killed him. I never, but we did. We did kill him. We did kill him. This is a crazy thing. God loved those people his chosen people, and he sent prophet after prophet to speak the truth. You think, well, surely they embraced the prophet of God. These prophets that came, no, no. Oftentimes they killed those prophets. <laughs> they killed him. Again and again they did that. They pleased not God in the sense, Paul says, they persecuted us. We're just trying to deliver the gospel. They, they've persecuted us. They've, they've forbidden us to speak. They, they have hindered the salvation of those all around us. They've laid stumbling blocks in the path. I tell you, I, I can't think of anything worse to do than to derail the salvation of the souls of other people. Boy, to be guilty of that is a, a horrific crime. I think, to 
keep the gospel from people, to hide it away, to not allow it to be delivered. But you understand, we have it. We have it. Sometimes we forbid ourselves from delivering it. He says, the consequences of those things is that they, they don't please God and it carries on out. The last part of verse 15 says, they are contrary to all men. They're opposite. They are antagonistic of all men. You know, it is difficult, <laughs> I'd say, to not have a good relationship with God and then to have a good relationship with everybody else. When this is broken, this is going to be broken too. Okay? And we try to fix this without fixing this. And we work and we work and we work and you're never going to fix this the way it ought to be without doing this. Paul says, we did not please men. These people did not please God. I'm telling you, you can please God. That is what we're called to. There in verse number four, it says again, it says, even so we speak not as pleasing men, but God, as pleasing God, which trieth our hearts. But God... These people don't please God. We've chosen an opposite path, a different way to go. We have chosen to please God. We've chosen to follow Him. We've chosen to live our life differently. We've chosen to follow the Word of God, to, make, to elevate that in our life, to make it a priority, to, that this is it. This is what we're going to do. We're going to please God. Do we always do that? No. Sometimes we fail. Sometimes we're not what we ought to be. There, if I had time, I'd take it. If my voice was better, I'd do it. I'd, in, in Nehemiah and Esther, <clears throat> there is a little phrase that shows again and again and again. This little phrase is this. It is, if it please the king. If it please the king. <clears throat> if, if Brother Mike was the king, and I'm speaking to the king, he probably likes to be the king. And I said, if it pleased the king, you would do this. You would show me your favor if it pleased the king. I'm recognizing that pleasing the king is the big deal. Nehemiah and Esther both were in a relationship working for Esther married to the king. And they addressed the king in this way, if it pleased the king. If it would please you, would you do this? And when the king did what they wanted them to do, they were pleased to do it. I wonder if we started our day instead of just running off, just beginning to stuff stuff into our day, making decisions, going, planning, doing, saying, in motion, active, instead of doing all that, we'd say this first of all, dear God, if it please you, this is what I'm going to do. If it please you, this is where I'm going. Lord, you stop me. Lord, change my direction. Change my path. Lord, this, is, this seems to be what I'm intending to do. But I don't want to do anything without your, without your pleasure, Amen. without you being pleased in this. I know what we say sometimes. <clears throat> Maybe not out loud. But we say this. When do I get to please myself? When is it about me? Let me read you a little phrase from Romans 15, 3. For even Christ pleased not himself. Oh. Now think of that. 
Can't tell you how many times people have told me. I deserve this. I deserve it. Well, you be very careful about that. You know what we deserve. I don't want to be harsh. We deserve hell. That is what we deserve. And our Savior, our Redeemer, He would not even please Himself. It was all about this. To please His Father. If He had a right, if anybody had a right to please themselves, it would have been Him. He said, but I've chosen to please the Father. And the Father's stamp of approval on his life was this. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I can't think of a greater thing to be said about somebody's life than to say they pleased their God. They walked with him. We're not to entangle ourselves in the affairs of this life, but that we, the soldier is that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Hebrews 11, I'll close with this. You just turn over there just real quick if you don't mind. Hebrews 11. There's a man by the name of Enoch. He's mentioned in verse number 5 and 6 here. Just a little bit. We don't know nothing. We don't know much about him, this man. <clears throat> it says in Hebrews 11, verse 5, it says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. God just took him. God took him. And he was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony. His testimony is this. Mark it down. The little bit that we know about this man is this. That he pleased God. That he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that, is he, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You want to do right with your life? You're trying to find the path? You're trying to do what you ought to do? You're seeking. We're coming into the end of the year. It all changes over for a lot of us. I like the new beginning of the new year. We're going to make goals and we're going to chart out a path and we're going to try to work on our health and we're going to try to lose weight and we're going to try to stop this habit. All the things that we want to do, do this. Please Him. Please Him. Say, yes, yes. God, if I miss everything else, if I could just do this, would you be satisfied with that? You ought to be. I'll tell you this, He'd be satisfied with it. He'd be happy with that. Let me ask you about your heads just for a moment. ask you a question nobody's looking let me pray for you how many of you would say God is pleased with me right now I'll just slip up your hands and say God's pleased with me thank you thank you I got I got a bit it's tough to raise our hands sometimes in that because we know us. Looking for something there that you say, I know God's not pleased with this in my life. Take care of it today. Nobody needs, nobody else even needs to know about it. Maybe you've gotten sour, gotten bitter about something. Maybe you're unforgiving about it to somebody, angry. Maybe you're jealous, lustful, 
I don't know what it is that you're battling. Let's take care of that today. Lay it down on the altar. Give it to God. Say, God, I know this, is, this isn't right. This shouldn't be. I want you to help me with it. I'm tired of failing with this. Help me to know victory. Help me to please you. Help me to please you. Help, help me to fit what you want me to be. Help me to be agreeable to you. Father, help us today. Help us, Lord, to make this the task of our life. In the name of the Savior, we pray.